Okay, so I'm here with Wayne Phillips. I uh, met him at Keller Williams, the Woodlands office, and really cool uh, guy uh, we just met. We just both enjoy doing videos, and we're going to uh, decided to put together a real estate home inspection tip of the day, and we're gonna just ask some basic questions that are asked pretty much all the time, right? That's right. The same question, so we're gonna make a video of it and knock out some of these topics. So your one minute, one question, inspection tip of the day. And that is, Chris, you know, I've worked with a lot of buyers and different inspectors over the years, but I'm curious to find from your perspective, what would you find is the most common home inspection issue that comes up? Oh man, that's a, that's a, that is a really great question. And that most common problem that shows up on every single inspection report is roof and HVAC. You know, so uh, if you get those in your inspection report, I wouldn't be alarmed because HVAC, random fact, I don't know if you know this one, but the the most common, the best place to run your HVAC business, the number one place in the world is in Houston. Houston, Texas. <laughs> yeah, Houston, Texas. So, you know, there's a lot of HVAC companies. They're really busy. They really work. It's just hot, humid, and our AC service systems always need to be serviced at least once a year. And how many people do that? You know, <laughs> you should do it twice a year. Right? Twice a year. I right? usually yeah. tell my clients, you want to have it serviced in the spring, do your summer check to get make sure your air conditioning is ready to go for the hot and humid summers yeah. and then you check it again in the fall to make sure the heating system is safe and ready to go for the times the month or two that you use your your heating system when it gets chilly around here right, right. yeah so yeah so twice a year once to twice a year and then yeah. the roof uh we need to maintenance it every four to five years and so you have to reseal it replace the damaged shingles that are there mm -hmm. and no one does that either. So, right. yeah, so that shows up in every single inspection report. And that's a great question. This is actually a real hot topic in the home inspection world is, you know, one of the best, one of the hardest problems is relaying our message to the client. And you've had, you know, a lot of different home inspectors in there. What is the best way that we can relay our information in the inspection report to the client? Yeah. Excellent question, and I would tell you there is no one answer to that question because okay. in my experience, uh, I've worked with different buyers and sellers that have different levels of experience. So it is important to properly communicate the results of an inspection based on how the uh, client is, is hearing that information. So in other words, there's a difference between a first time home buyer and somebody who's bought multiple homes who understands the process, who has read inspection reports. So, you know, I've had situations where, you know, a, a, an inspection could derail a contract and nobody wants that. We want, we want uh, both buyer and seller to be satisfied with the process, that we have a good home inspection and that any concerns and any items that uh, need to be addressed are addressed properly and it's fair for both sides. So, you know, that, that is a, a really good point and that's why in our routine uh, at the very beginning of the inspection, we always like to uh, dis talk to the client. We describe our home inspection process mm -hmm. and so that is the part of building a relationship with the client to understand their tolerances. So we always ask, what are their major concerns? And I think that's where the, the relationship develops where you start to understand the client's tolerances and levels of the inspection. So basically the tip today is whether you are a realtor or a home inspector, communication is important. You have to understand your client's needs and address those uh, needs appropriately. I agree, yeah. So it's, it's different every time. That's right. All right, great question. Is it the seller's responsibility to fix everything on an inspection report? All right, that is a fantastic question and actually, the seller is not required to fix anything at all. So as a, on a home inspection report, we come in there, we give a non-biased, full information of everything we can find on that inspection report. And it's up to your buyer to, under, to determine if that inspection report is within their tolerances. So it, they're not required to fix anything, so they can try to negotiate stuff, but if the seller doesn't wanna do it, they have to determine if they want to buy the property or not if the seller doesn't want to fix anything. Right. Yeah, so. so again, it kind of comes down like to one of our other tips and that was communication. So right. you got to understand the tolerances and properly communicate that. You know, one deal may be a non-issue to, to one client or it could be a deal breaker to another. So right. you have to understand what they're willing to accept and um, and if we and hopefully you can negotiate that and first of all everything can be fixed right you, we don't need to take a, a wrecking ball or a bulldozer <laughs> to a house that's got 
an inspection problem. Right, right. The roof or the AC issues, you know, yes. everything can be fixed. The question is, can it be fixed to the satisfaction of both parties? <laughs> can you negotiate it right. uh, reasonably so that uh, it's fair right. and uh, the home is safe? Items that need to be fixing do get fixed and the appropriate part, uh, party uh, is, takes care of that. Right, yeah, so good question. So uh, when it comes down to it, the uh, seller's not required to do anything, but I, it's still always good to play ball, right? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and take some action there. And uh, um, whenever you're trying to choose an inspector, do you like an inspector that is over the top picky or picky on their inspections and call out everything? Or do you like an inspector that just hits the major items? Very good question. And some of you out there might be thinking, I want a picky inspector for my buyers, but maybe not a picky inspector for my sellers. And that's actually incorrect. I want a professional inspector like Chris and his inspectors to find everything that's wrong with it, whether it be a significant, dangerous safety item or a somewhat minor uh, cosmetic item. And the reason I want that, even for my sellers, is I want a complete report. That's why we hire professional inspectors, is to get a complete report so that everything is out there on the table for both parties to see and to properly address and and resolve. If there's items that need to be fixed, they should be fixed. Uh, even even uh, minor items, because the it needs to be done at some point. Homes require maintenance, so even if it's a minor caulking thing, we need we want it in the report. Right, and then also the idea is a minor is also relative. So like doing a caulking job outside for say a computer engineer is probably a big deal, right? You're not right. for a handyman. So uh, you know that's a great answer to the question. And what do you you know just to reiterate it is just. You know, it's good to have everything on the table just to avoid future bumps down the road. So that doesn't mean that the seller is required to fix everything on there. We talked right. about that in one of our other tips. And, right. you know, and some items are more significant than others, but they should all be there. They're, they should all be there. So just to avoid any problems and they ever, it's an open book, you know, right. so they can just negotiate it down the line. So, all right. Stay tuned for the next another, tip. Yeah. Another great question. All right. All right. Yeah, Chris, a lot of times, you know, we have a 10 day window for the option period. And sometimes for one reason or another, we don't get the inspection on the calendar until like day seven. Right. Okay. Uh, it's important for say I'm representing a buyer. I need to get that inspection report back quickly right. so that I can review that with my buyer and address it with the seller. Uh, how long should it take or how long does it typically take for an inspection report to be created and back to the agent? All right, so that's a great question, and that's actually a two answer question. So when it, we're following the Trek real estate rules, uh, the Trek rule is I need to get my report back to you in 72 hours. Which, okay, that's not acceptable. Right, that's a really long time, right? And so the most common practice you're gonna see with the uh, bigger companies or the uh, better inspectors, experienced inspectors, you're gonna see that inspection report the same day or actually built on site. So you can get it even within the hour of the inspection. So I don't even like the inspection report even showing up the next day because you guys need to start that negotiations time right then and there so you can get that ball rolling. So I like that answer. Yeah. Time is of the essence in this I, business. Especially, I mean, you got to be quick. You got to be yeah. quick with these things. That's a great question. Um, and um, yeah, so try to get an inspector that gets that information to you as quick as possible. So the, today's tip is timely inspection reports. Uh, timely inspection reports. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. Yeah, it was good. That was perfect.